Senator. Senator Francis Black, and you have six minutes. Would it be okay if I shared my time with my colleague, Senator Callagher? Three and three. Five and one. Yeah. Five and one. Thank you. Certainly. Um, Senator Callagher. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hello, Minister. Um, lovely to see you here today, and congratulations on your new role, and I wish you well in it. Um, as many of you know, ensuring that we address the mental health needs across our country is an issue that is very dear to my heart. On a daily basis, I hear from families and family members finding it difficult to access mental health services. Despite some excellent services and dedicated staff, the supports are sporadic, at times uncoordinated and not always fit for purpose. There is prevalence of mental health dif difficulties here in Ireland and we need to stop writing reports, policies and strategies and start acting on implementing uh, international best practice. One in seven adults in Ireland will have experienced a mental health difficulty in the last year. 9% of the population aged 15 or over has a mental health problem, according to the Healthy Ireland survey. Mental health difficulties are an issue of inequality according to the Healthy Ireland survey. Mental health problems are considerably higher among people living in deprived areas, 13% compared to the overall population of 5%. You can see from these facts, Ministers, that writing reports and not implementing them is fully, fully is costing Ireland dearly in that we are not looking after the welfare of our people. Many good people work hard in delivering mental health services across the country, but problems within the mental health system are far and wide. Mental health staffing is still 25% lower staff than recommended in the mental health policy, a vision for change. Specialist 24-7 mental health crisis services are not even available across the country. Therefore, people may wait for hours in A&E. Around one third of child and adolescent admissions to hospital were to adult units in 2015. There is no national adv advocacy service dedicated to families of people with a mental health difficulty. There is no national advocacy service dedicated to people with mental health difficulties living in the community. We must also not ignore the contributing factor that alcohol has on our mental health and how it exacerbates pre-existing mental health difficulties. Alcohol affects our ability to cope with everyday life and can have significant consequences when we face traumatic life events. Alcohol plays a key role in impacting the number of suicides, with over 50% where alcohol was a contributing factor. There are 11,000 cases of self-harm presenting to A&E each year. A third of all cases are alcohol-related. The World Health Organization has estimated that the risk of suicide when a person is currently abusing alcohol is eight times greater than if they were not abusing alcohol. Suicide is the leading cause of death among young Irish men aged between 15 and 24. In tackling mental health, it is imperative that we look at this in a holistic way, and in particular, we should look at gender analysis. The HSE and the National Women's Council, along with others, have been successful in securing the World Congress on Women and Mental Health to visit Ireland in 2017. The HSE have had a successful project in policy-proofing gender analysis, and we should work hard to ensure that this is implemented across all mental health areas. We also must not forget about the families that are impacted by addiction. This is something that's extremely close to my heart, Minister. We need to ensure that the appropriate support services are available to these families and that their risk to mental health issues is reduced by early interventions and funding is found for organisations supporting them. I deal with, men, with family members on a daily basis who are absolutely heartbroken by having somebody they love with an alcohol, drug or gambling problem. So as you see, this is a huge task that before us is a difficult task but certainly one that we shouldn't shy away from or write a report about. We need direct action. We need to hold ministers, officials and service providers to account and to ensure that we achieve the highest quality of services for the thousands of people across the country impacted by mental health services. Mental health reform has been campaigning on the implementation of the recommendations and I'm supporting them in calling on this government and the minister to implement these recommendations and to put our nation's mental health as a top priority. Acting now will save further headache, anguish and distress to our fellow citizens. A country is judged by how we treat its vulnerable. I want us to be judged well, so please, Minister, let's start acting. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Caleb Keller, you have one 